Hello, welcome to this video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the world of Excel and QuickBooks combined. You see, QuickBooks Advance hasn't been around all that long, but already had some great features added to it. And one of those is called Spreadsheet Sync. And the idea here is that we can utilize the world of Excel to get more out of QuickBooks itself. Now, we've already done a few videos on this sort of concept before. If you think about it, we've looked at having the opportunity to do videos like bringing it into Google Sheets and items like that. If you look back at some of the videos we've done, where we've been looking at GACOM and Live View, to be able to bring QuickBooks into the world of Google Sheets. And as great as those solutions are, a lot of the criticism I've always got on those videos is that, well, that's great, but I don't use Google Sheets, I use Excel. And this opportunity then brings that into fruition. Now the good thing about this as well is that there are actually some opportunities here to sync both ways. And that's where I think we're gonna see a lot of excitement coming your way. So let's roll that intro and go straight into the world of what spreadsheet sync can mean to you and your business. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I'm a chartered accountant, a certified UK trainer, fancy new logo, as shown here. That QuickBooks chap on the internet, as shown here, and also head of accounts here at Wofix. Now, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the world and wonderful world of spreadsheet sync. And we're gonna have a look and see how it could be worked for you and your business. So let's not have any more introduction. Let's go straight into it and see exactly what I'm talking about. Let's have a look. Okay, so the world of spreadsheet sync. It's all gonna come from QuickBooks Advance. And what you'll notice in the top right hand corner on your company cog, you're gonna go through tools. And then from tools, you're gonna go down to spreadsheet sync just here. Now, it's gonna tell you exactly how to get this done. Just a few steps, start using spreadsheet sync. Allow the browser to open a link. In Excel, trust the add-in. And then sign into spreadsheet sync with your Intuit ID. Let's go gonna make sure you're happy with it open this link now for me I've already installed this so actually I don't need to go through this one again but basically it's gonna give you a spreadsheet and on there is gonna give you the link here you click on the link you'll sign in and then enable it now what are the cool thing is it's all to do with this spreadsheet sync at the top here and what you'll do is press spreadsheet sync and this will activate for you the world of spreadsheet sync so let's sign in and have a look exactly what's going on now, one of the advantages of this straight away is that with the other solutions we used, which went to Google Sheets, you had to have a license for them and also you had to, you had to have the right permissions in place. And there was a few things that, although easy to understand and get your head around, was just that extra bit of complication. In this, on the other hand, though, there's no complication whatsoever. It's literally as simple as you have Excel, you download the plugin, get yourself logged in, and you're already off to seeing what this advantage can do. Okay, so straight away, as soon as you go in, it's gonna give you some opportunity to understand what's going on. There is a beta sign just here, so don't expect everything to be working exactly straight away, but we know it works pretty well, so we should be absolutely fine. Welcome to Spreadsheet Sync. Combine the power of Excel and QuickBooks. Learn what you can do or jump right in. So pressing this little button here gives us a nice little video. So as you can see here, it's only in the QuickBooks Online Advance. It gives you access to QuickBooks for info, build reports, measure performance, record transactions and more. And what really excites me is this bit here. You connect your spreadsheet sync to QuickBooks, download and install spreadsheets, so it makes it dead straightforward. You can bring in the information. You can connect to the spreadsheet, and this is a breakdown of what it looks like to install that new add-in. You just need to trust this add-in. Connect to the spreadsheet sync. Build reports, we're gonna have a look at that in a moment. But then the exciting thing is edit data in Excel. So you get a two way street and this is one of the only one softwares where you're gonna have that option to really bring that into play. So I'm gonna play around with that. As you can see, you also have some help guides, how to set up report, how to edit and post data and spreadsheet frequently asked questions. All right, let's get started. First of all, we're just gonna build our first report. We're gonna use my QuickBooks data. From there, we can bring in any data source we want. So we've got special reports. We've got accounting reports, business overview. We've got manage accounts payable, manage accounts receivable, review expense and purchases, and review sales. 
So let's go see some of the ones we would know with. So let's go and have a look at profit and loss. Let's go straight away and just bring in that trial balance, see what it looks like, and select data to get. Now we've chosen what we've got. We now have this wonderful filter name at the top here, so we can call it and add the filter if we want to. Uh, we can see if it's cash or accrual. And then we can put a date range, including dynamic date ranges as well. So let's do the whole this financial year. Or you can make your own. Oh, we even have the opportunity to select cells where they get the parameters. So you can make this to be super constructive, where you could create a dashboard where if you change the date range, it'll then automatically bring in the dates for you. That to me is going to be something really powerful. All right, let's add to new sheet and see how it brings it in. Straight away, it's doing exactly what we've said. A list of trial balance. This here is telling us when it last got updated, so that's great to see. And the information is already here with a nice little filter system that you can use on Excel. Now, just to be clarify on this one, I'm using this, this on the Mac, so your Excel may be slightly different, but functionality-wise, it's going to be exactly the same. Now, one thing I'd like to be able to see here is the ability to be able to edit what data comes in. But at the moment, though, at least we are getting the data come through. We can see the numbers um, and we can see anything that's coming through. And again, it's giving us a type opportunity there, which I like. There's also opportunity in the right hand side to reload as well. So we can keep things reloaded. So that was my QuickBooks data. What about advanced template? Well, set template, simple management report, simple management report, edit. And what that's done is it's given us an opportunity to see notes and control. So we can change items here. So let's bring this into our 2021. And this is really showing you where this template idea can come into play. So in fact, let's do 2022. We can see the months that we want to be looking at. Year to date, uh, comparative period, total period, previous month. And this is really bringing in that opportunity. And it tells you here, how once we've set our parameters, sample data, change the values, go to the sheets before refreshing. And then when I press refresh, it's going to change the data around for me based on the information I've got here. Got a nice little loading option down there. But this really proves how you're going to have loads of options to be able to bring data in like this and then be able to create it so you can change it as much as you need to. As you can see here, in trial balance, multiple periods. We've got year to date figures being dragged in. We've got the opportunity to look at the balance sheet and you can see the figures that have been brought through there. And then we've also got our profit and loss multiple years as well. The one thing I can see here is once you've created that, that kind of locks this into place. We can't add any more. So let's just do a file new. Let's have a look at what other options that we have. So it's glitchy sync, get started, build report, existing file. So this is where we want to bring in a report you've already built and then you can just save it and maybe change the, the client around. So once you've absolutely nailed how you want this look and feel to be, you can then bring it over from there as well. So that's quite a nice little feature. All right, building reports, bringing them in, absolutely fine. And again, that's what we've had with Google Sheets. Ultimately, from my point of view, I think just the report side of things, the dashboard side of things, you still may find that the Google Sheets element could be a little bit cleaner and more useful because you can set it to ultimately to automatically refresh. One of the disadvantages we've kind of got here is that you don't seem to have that option to be able to set it to automatically reload. It's going to be a case that you'll have to go into the file. Maybe you can have it load and, and, and refresh on, on startup. But to have that live database or that live flow without using things like macros and stuff, you're probably not going to be able to achieve it as quickly and as cleanly as you would be from the others. But doesn't mean that it's the end of the world. So it's definitely going to be the case that still, if you want just standard reports, then it's probably going to be better off for you to be thinking about utilizing some of the other options so it goes to Google Sheets. But what I think is really powerful here is because it's built by QuickBooks is that ability to bring data in. And that to me is where I'm going to get quite excited about it. So let's have a look. So here's we're getting the opportunity to bring in some templates. We have invoice and bills, journal entries, suppliers, class, purchase, employees, time activity, estimates, and accounts. So let's do what we know best, invoice and bills. 
You also have the opportunity to bring in existing records from QuickBooks. Use your user filter to bring in only the records that you want. Oh, wow. So let's tick that little box as well, if it'll let me. And post data to QuickBooks. Ready to post data? I'm sure you want to continue. Uh, not at the moment, no. But that's how we would post at the moment. So let's first have a look at, look at the notes and controls. As you can see here, we've got organization name, we've got invoice, bill, credit note. Okay, right, let's bring some data in. So here we go. Let's just concentrate on invoices for now and bring those invoices in. And this is going to give us some indication of what that data should look like. So as we can see here, here's our data coming through. Now, this data should relate to the sales and invoice list that we have here. So as you can see, we've got this sort of data coming through. I brought in invoice list, so let's look at 1284 for Cameron Bedley. It should be 894. 1285, Karen Bentley, exclusive taxation services, and if we keep going, 20% VAT, so that data's in there. So let's change it, let's do something simple. Let's change the description. We don't want services provided, which is the current name of it. If I look here, look into it, edit the invoice maybe. So service provider 745 is what it is at the moment. So let's change that. So I'm going to say from service provided to test advance upload. Now if I post data to QuickBooks and I say yes, let's see what happens. Ah, okay. So I haven't said that I want to post this one. So let's say yes to that. Oh, you can even upload a sheet. Yeah, go on then, let's upload that as well. Let's bring this as 500. Success. 1285, it's gone in. Link, viewing QuickBooks. So if, if I want to, I could copy this. So let's go in. So remember what it was before? Let's have a look and see what it is now. Edit invoice. You can see it's changed. Test advance uploaded here. Quantity one, rate 500. Um, the attachment didn't attach, but that's fine. But everything else has changed exactly how we wanted to change. How cool is that? But what that does give you the opportunity then is to do maybe a bit of automation if you need to. We could then start looking at possibility here of being able to add some extra bits in here to, to really enhance it. So what we could do is, at the moment we're looking at invoice and bills, but let's look at journal entries. This is where we can test it a little bit. So I'm trying to bring in my journal entries here. So with that, what I can do, add a new journal entry, just as an example. So I'm just gonna put journal entry in, let's say work in progress, even if I've not got one. So I've added my first journal here. So let's see how we can get that data into here, because it's not gonna come through automatically, which again is probably one of the disadvantages of having QuickBooks. But if I was to refresh the data, reload, load the data in, and then I press a little button, bring existing records in, and press OK. Bit clunky, but this should be a way in which I bring that data into QuickBooks in line itself. Let's see. And as you can see now, that first journal's come. The important bit is that the journal number has to match, but then you have as many little ones as you want, and you can see the numbers are starting to come here. Uh... <laughs> I feel it's brought it in incorrectly though, because the GBP should probably be here. But anyway, let's figure it out. So let's say yes. Yes. Invoice number two. But today's date, 13th of the 11th, 2022. Um, let's, do an, let's do an adjustment to work in progress again. Let's do it the other way around. Let's see if I can get away with not having to do that. So. Let's try and reduce my work in progress by 500 pound. Again, against sales. Okay, so there's definitely something not right here. 
I don't know if they've not put it into the right columns or something, but it's making me have to put my GBP in here. According to that column at the top is my debit column. So unfortunately, and I bet I'm not even allowed to type in that one. Okay, so I don't think this is going to work, but we're going to give it a go. I'm going to give it a go. Benefit the bar down and all that. All right. So let's post this and see what happens. Ready to post quick because let's have a look. So I should see my working period reduced by 500. It seems a little bit buggy, but bugs we can deal with, bugs we can fix. But what this gives us the power to do is start to automate some processes. So I think we'll leave it there as a first look. But this gives us an opportunity to start thinking about what we can bring in to start really enhancing this process. Because to me, this way we can start really start to do some good and be able to bring some real great opportunities in. Think about having to bring in data from another source. Maybe your EPOS solution, your till. Bring in your till directly into QuickBooks just by click of the button. It sounds really powerful. I've got a lot here that I think can be really useful. And we just need to get our head around exactly how best to do it. That's our first look at what I think is going to be a huge feature to QuickBooks Online Advance giving us that chance to automate, giving us our chance to really go for it. And I'm really excited about what this means going forward. So if this is something you want me to look in more detail, please do use the comment section below. I'm definitely gonna be revisiting this at some point, but the more comments we get below, the more likes and shares and everything else, the quicker I'll come back to revisiting this process. I'm really excited for this. And again, even though I wasn't able to get that journal entry to work because of a bug, I think once those bugs are sorted out, we're into a real good place of being able to push this even further. My name has been Aaron Patrick. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, all that sort of stuff. Again, the more we get on this particular video, the better we're gonna be at being able to make sure we have everything we need to get this right. My name has been Aaron Patrick. As always, this video has been an absolute pleasure to do for you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.